Let us bow our heads a moment for prayer. As this music sweetly comes through these microphones, only believe. I wonder if we have requests tonight that we would want to make known to God. And with our hands up, we promise we'll believe as we raise our hands. The Lord bless. Our Heavenly Father, we are approaching thee in the name of the Lord Jesus because that you promised if we did it this way that you would hear us. And we pray that you receive what we have need of into thy knowing Lord and will reward us according to our faith. We know you will because you promised. There's many requests, many hands were up. Mine too, Lord. I'm praying that you'll just meet with us tonight and show us the way we should live and what we should do to have faith in you. Get glory out of the service, Lord, as we commit ourselves to thee. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm certainly surprised tonight to see many of my friends sitting here on the platform with me. Brother Lee Vale was one of the managers, but well, I, well, I can't call that German name. Hair hoser. I get it backwards all the time. Brother Don Ruddle, no. Brother Shearer, everybody, I acquainted with all of them, so I'm certainly glad to have them here tonight to, to pray with us while we're preaching the word, praying for the sick. Now, I think tomorrow night and then Sunday afternoon back here and Saturday night is to be somewhere else. Have you been praying today? Fine. I'm sorry I kept you late last evening, but it was a new place. Everything new, and you know, it takes just a little bit to uh, get used to each other. As I used to say, uh, forgive the expression, get all the spooks away where we know one another. So we, all the funny feelings. Sometimes you meet in places, or oh, no disregarding to this auditorium, but see, it isn't always religious services, I suppose, help here. It's all kinds of services. And in there... As odd as it might seem, but there is spirit of everything. If you don't have spirit in you, you're dead. And people with different spirit congregate together. Jesus could not heal among a crowd like that. He come in his own country and they didn't believe him. And he could do no mighty works there. One day he had to lead a, a man that was blind all the way out of the city before he could get him to, to see and get his, and one with his hearing. See, sometimes you've got to get together where believers are assembled together and believe. And this place is dedicated now to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a church now, just as much church as wherever the people are, are meeting together, that is the church. So now, tonight we are very, very indeed privileged people, we feel, to be here tonight to assemble with you all to... to Pray and recognize Jesus Christ among us. Now, you know, the Presbyterians have a lot of, or the Episcopalians, I believe this, up and down, up and down. Raise up and say something, sit down. Raise up and say something, sit down. And I'm going to ask you to stand again while I read the word. And uh, Luke, the 24th chapter, if you will listen closely now, it's quite a lengthy scripture. I wish to begin with the 13th verse of Luke 24. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed to commune to together and reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said to them, What manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? 
And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they also had seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then said he unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the scriptures have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the, the scriptures, the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village where they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and gave it uh, to them, and their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scripture? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are aware that this is true. There is not anything in the world more truer than thy word. There is not anything in the world more uh, greater than thy word. And we pray that you will reveal this story to us in our hearts tonight. And we'll make this part of the scripture be relived again tonight. That we might recognize the Lord Jesus as they did. Only they recognized him a, a day after his resurrection. And now may we recognize him after 2,000 years. We ask in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Be seated. Thanks for the little welcome sign on the back of the church auditorium. My subject tonight was when their eyes were open, they knew him. Now, our setting tonight is the first Easter, the great dark day of crucifixion was passed. Our Lord Jesus had come to the world and had clearly identified himself to be the Son of God. All the scriptures had been pertaining to him he had fulfilled, even the last hours on the cross had been fulfilled. Now the resurrection had come, which was promised also. But the people of that day were somewhat like we are today. They had, in the enthusiasm of what they had been seeing, the supernatural and so forth, they had failed to recognize all the scripture that pertained to him. They had recognized some of it and believed, and some of it they had not recognized. I think that's a whole lot like today, that many times we'll accept some of the things that Jesus has said, but not all the things that he said. People sometimes get uh, say, well, we believe this, but we don't believe this. Well, you can't believe this without believing this. See, yeah. you've got to believe it all. It's either all God or it isn't any God. And so it all must be fitted in right in its place. And as I said last evening, God has lauded that his scripture from the beginning 
before there was any time when he was eternal, he, all, he is the eternal one, and then these things that's happening now are only the attributes of God's thinking. At first it has to be a thought, and then a word, and a word, it, when a thought expressed is a word, and then it's spoken, it has to happen. And the whole thing is God unfolding himself and his attributes, and then God being made material, tangible, that we can talk to, speak with, and his whole church body and everything. Therefore, your name was in his thinking. That's how you have eternal life. You can't have it no other way. If you got eternal life, you always was. See? You, if otherwise, you just can't say, well, I belong to church, I do this. No, sir. Eternal life never had a big, anything that was eternal, never did begin and cannot end. So you were only in his thinking, your name, who you are and what you are. That's the only way you could ever have eternal life, because you always was. And those, no matter what they are, they are eternally dead. They were dead from the beginning. The Bible said the woman that lives in pleasure is dead while she is alive. See, she's always been dead. She's dead in sin and trespasses. And now, if you were in the quickening, in his beginning, that's what he come to redeem. And your name was put on the Lamb's book of life in his thinking at the beginning. And he come to redeem all names that's in that book. No more. Not one more. Just what was in there. When the last name's redeemed, he takes his book and claims what he has redeemed. Now, and what a, a strange thing would be if we couldn't believe all that's written in the Scripture. For the whole thing is God's Word. It's all inspired, every bit of it. And we believe every bit of it. Now, this glorious scene that we have before us tonight is Jesus up from the dead in the springtime, walking around. Up from the spring, the resurrection, the first flower to rise from the dead, our Lord Jesus. He was the first fruits of them that slept. The Easter flower that come up. First one that stuck his head up at the cold midnight of darkness and sin. He had paid the sin price, and God raised him up on the third day. We believe that with all of our heart, that God raised him up on the third day according to his promise. And we believe it according to the scripture, that he raised him up the third day. He was the first one that raised up from the dead, the first fruits of the ones that slept. And to think of it, that great distressed through the 4,000 years that the world had groped in sin and know not the way out. Here he is back from the dead. What a time, a springtime. The church ought to have been singing the glorious uh, hallelujahs, but instead of that, they were mooping around, sad and everything because they failed to believe all he said. And that's the same thing it is tonight. Amen. Because they failed to believe all he said and promised. That's what the church is in such a condition tonight that it's in. It's because we have failed to believe all that he said he would do. All the scriptures that pertains to him. We fail to believe it all. We bang it around, mix it up, and put something else to it. If we believe the whole thing, there would be a spring of joy in our souls because we are ra raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection, now sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, with all principalities and powers and darkness under our feet. We have a right with the blood of Jesus Christ, our token that we are a purchase of God, that God has paid our redemption through Jesus Christ, and we have a right to hold that token over anything that we ask and receive it. God said so. That settles it. We could just believe all the scriptures. But the thing of it was the sad part. Many people that knew him and loved him did not recognize that he had risen from the dead. So is it today. Many people who believe and even teach that he rose from the dead still doesn't recognize it. That's right. They certainly cannot uh, comprehend that it's too much of a, a phenomenon, it's too unusual. The unusual things is where God is if it's according to his promise. Many loved him and knew it not. It was just absolutely too unusual for them to believe what those witnesses that come from the tomb and said, we saw a company of angels. 
that said he has raised from the dead. Oh, well, we see if they just look into the scripture, Amen. he promised it that he would do it. And just like if the Pharisees and religious teachers of his day, if they'd only looked into the scriptures like he said to search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me that tell who he is. If those disciples on that day had just looked into the scripture, they would have found in the scripture that he promised to raise up again and God promised to raise him up. And he did. Yet his promised word was written that he would do it to them. The word said that he would raise up. He had promised it, but yet they were sad and all beat out and everything. They thought they'd lost everything they had and everything had failed and it was the darkest hour that I guess they'd ever seen. They had hopes in him and believed in him and seen his great manifestation of miracles and signs and wonders and all the vindication of the Messiah. And then to see him stand there and die and have spit put up on his face. And when uh, he would, could discern the thoughts that was in the hearts of the people. But if I make this with a, a worldly expression, forgive it. But when the, the chips are down. That's when he still believed. When they put a rag around his face, those drunken soldiers, and put a rag around his face and took a stick and hit him on the head. So now we understand that you're a prophet. If you are a prophet, and they pass that stick one to the other and said, tell us who hit you, we'll believe it. See, it looked like he, he got caught in a trap. And they thought, well, if they'd ever seen anything to, uh, to him, he'd just smite them blind. He'd smite them dead if they'd seen anything. See, that's not always God's purpose in doing things. Amen. When he's on the cross in Ephesus, and the, the priest all said, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly, come down off the cross, we'll believe you. See, they just couldn't understand how God could ever go to the cross and die. But that's the reason God was made flesh so he could die. The Pharisees paid him the greatest compliment he ever had. When they said others he could not, others he did save, himself he cannot save. Certainly that was a compliment. If he saved himself, he could not save others. He had to give himself. That's the reason God was made flesh in order to die. That he could suffer and take the penalty upon himself. He couldn't do it as long as he was Jehovah in the spirit. God the Father in spirit could not do it. But when God was made flesh and dwelt among us, a human being, then he could taste death. And take the penalty that he had put upon all human beings, he took it up on himself and paid the price. Yet his promised word had promised this resurrection, but they did not understand that it would be so. They couldn't just absolutely get to it. The word, he was the vindication of his promise. Jesus talking to this Cleopius and his friend on the road to Emmaus was the vindication of his promised word. And yet they did not understand it. Amen. May I say it today, after 2,000 years of teaching, believing, still he's alive. Yes. And people cannot perceive it. Right. They cannot understand it. The main thing is they've been so indoctrinated with other things. Too many cares. And too much other stuff. That's the reason they cannot understand it. They were too sad and tore up to understand it. Now, notice, they were talking about him. Now, there was on the road over to Emmaus. They was going to go back to their old job again. Peter went fishing and... Some of the rest of them went with him, and Cleopas and his friends said, Well, we'll go over to Emmaus. That's perhaps where they lived, and about a Sabbath day's journey, a few miles across the hill. And this beautiful Easter morning, Jesus up from the dead, uh, his word, God's word, had been fulfilled. I'll not leave my Holy One see corruption, neither will I suffer my, I uh, will not, not leave his soul in hell, neither will I suffer my Holy One to see corruption, was the word. Notice David spoke it. Jesus said, destroy this temple now, raise it up in three days. Amen. The Son of Man goes up to Jerusalem, be given into the hands of the Gentiles, and cruel man be scoffed and scourged and crucified. But on the third day he shall rise up again. Hallelujah. He said so, that ought to settle it. Here are these men that he told that to, that know the word, walking along the road sad about it. Can you imagine such a sight? But it certainly has repeated again. 
It's repeated again. We find out as he went along the road, one great thing about him, they were talking about him when he appeared. Now, that's a trouble today. The reason I think he don't appear to so many of us is because we don't talk about him enough. We've got other things we've got to talk about. Our denominational difference. We've got to fuss about that. We've got to talk about communism. We've got all kinds of programs and everything else. All got us tied up. We don't have time to talk about him. The church program. Who's going to be the elected pastor? Who's going to do this and who's going to do that? We're talking about everything else but him. When we ought to be talking about him. It's always, that should be our, our, that should be our objective. That should be our, our whole life is in him. I said to a man the other day, he said, why do you believe that stuff? I said, sir, I spent my life. That's what I give my life for it. I wish I had 10,000 lives to give for it. Amen. I still believe it. Sure, we must be talking about him if we want to see him. That's when always, they should have recognized him, but they never. When he walked up to the side of him, they should have known. Remember, they'd been walking with him for three years. And here, the could you imagine his disciples that have walked with him for three years, here he is walking right along by them and just as blind as a bat. Why? Because they didn't know the scripture. And yet he had told them the scripture. And here he was, Emmanuel, made flesh, dwelt among us, and the Pharisees didn't recognize him. They couldn't understand that. How this man, well, they crucified him because he said he broke the Sabbath and, and made himself God. That's the reason they crucified him. Now we find out that the reason they failed to know that is because they did not know the scripture. Now these disciples should have recognized him, but they didn't know the scripture. Here, he uh, then revealed to them, notice as he began to go along, he revealed to them the scripture promises concerning himself for that age. Not the scripture promises in Noah's age. Not the scripture promises for other ages. The scripture promise concerning himself for that age. Amen. That showed exactly who he was. See, he began to ask and said, um, why are you so sad? Well, they said, are you a stranger here? Look him right in the face. Are you a stranger here? I don't know what's happened. Why, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, a prophet, approved of God. And we hoped that he would be the one that would deliver Israel. And this is the third day and they crucified him and all these things. And he just, he said, what things happened? Just like he knew nothing about it. See, he just acted as if he, he didn't know nothing about it. But I remember when he began to speak then, he began to reveal to them the promises concerning himself. said, don't you know how Christ must first suffer and enter into his glory? And then he began with the scriptures from Moses and all the prophets and reveal to them the scriptures pertaining to himself. Amen. The Messiah. What the Messiah was to be. What the acts that he must do. Everything that he must be. He revealed that to them. And he, they still did not understand. If that is a repeat today, Amen. he's doing the same and still the church mopes in darkness. Revealing to them who he is and what he is. And, and still they say, well, now I believe uh, my church te- There you are. You see, that's the reason you go back to the scripture. Search the scripture. They've got the truth. We get so twisted. How do we know it's a scripture? When it's a scripture promise for that age. Now, he didn't go back and say, you remember Moses, what he done? See, he revealed to him the scripture pertaining to himself for that age. He was a light of that age. Moses was a light of his age. Jeremiah was a light of his age. It was the God's light shining forth for the word that was promised for that age. Every age has its promised word. God sends his prophets and reveals that word, vindicates his prophet first, then reveals that word and makes it live. Right. And Jesus was the Christ. Amen. And everything that pertained to the Christ, he had vindicated it. Amen. A virgin birth, healed the sick, discerned the thoughts in their hearts, everything that he is supposed to do to be the Messiah, and yet raised from the dead and they still didn't recognize it. 
They still didn't know it. After the scriptures had been revealed, still they never recognized him. Though he was that promised word. Now remember how beautiful that is. The word that he was revealing to them, show them. They had walked right with him for three years and recognized it. Know that he fulfilled that word. There they went, walking on down to Emmaus. Is that so? <laughs> Just didn't understand it. They didn't get it. Notice. Then when it comes to the place, after him revealing the word over again to them and show them how Christ must do these things, and still they didn't get it, notice the rebuke they got, them preachers, for not knowing and recognizing the fulfilled scripture that is fulfilled before their eyes. Notice his words to them, fools, slow of understanding. Here was God himself, the resurrected Messiah, walking along with him, showing him, said, why, don't you understand that Christ must do these things? Don't you know that it must be this way and this way and thus and thus? And all day long, expounding to them the scriptures and still, is that so? And didn't know that was him standing right there. Then he looked around at you and preached the word. And it told him and showed him the things that were supposed to be. And still they didn't understand. He said, Fools and slow of heart to understand. Understand the vindicated scripture of the hour. The scripture that pertained to him in that day. Yet he was the disciples. But they knew not the written word when they seen it made manifest. Amen. I won't let that soak just a moment. See, didn't know when to read it out of the scripture that it's a promise for this day. And then watch God make it manifest and still say, I wonder. Uh, Same thing, see? Just exactly we're still dealing with human beings. And we find out that he rebuked them sharply. They were disciples because they didn't know the word that when it was made manifest before them, they didn't understand it. What the same thing has happened today, but in the minds of the people, it makes you feel sorry for them. Because one's got a group going this way, one's got one going this way, and all they think about is making that group grow. That's, right. That's the reason that Christ can't reveal himself to the people. Yeah. Why the church ought to be a, the most, why it ought to be in its glorious stage now, in the power of his resurrection, great signs and wonders. And instead of that, they have fooled around so much of this till they're walking blindly into the ecumenical council to take on the mark of the beast and know yeah. it not. Exactly know his words saying that it would do that. And they think it's real good, it's nice, it makes a good offer, and so they'll do it. How can two walk together? What are you Pentecostals going to do? You're going to have to sacrifice your fundamental doctrine of the baptism of the Holy Ghost to do it. Right. Certainly you are. And there you are. What are you going to do when that time comes? Just foolishly walking right into it. Some of the leaders of Pentecostal people, full gospel people, stand in these councils and set before the Vatican. And then the hierarchies and so forth and say, it's the most spiritual feeling. A man that's that numb to the Spirit of God that would call such as that. No wonder he'd say fools and slow of heart. Amen. Amen. To understand what the scripture said. He'd speak out tonight. If he was speaking through a vessel, he'd say the same thing. Yes. Fools and slow of heart to understand. How that when the word is made manifest right there and then walk right into it. Say now, we're too busy with our programs. To, uh, they were too busy listening to him and doing other things. And, and so we find out that now we got so many different creeds. We have so many television programs. And now we got an anti-communist move. I was listening to Lifeline the other morning, giving the documented statements of it. And, and communism? Why, you would never sweep it out. Why, they've been in here for years and years and years. All these different programs and systems, so said Lifeline, even into these... Uh, drives like for Seaver policy and stuff like that in it. In the anti-communist movement, anti-communist movement, communists is in there inspiring it just to find out who's who. Right. Oh, uh, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the coming of Jesus Christ Amen. for the church. Amen. Ministers ought to be busy about that and seeing what the scriptures promise today. Amen. I'm not looking for a taking over a communist. I'm looking for a coming kingdom. Jesus Amen. Christ in the millennium to set in. Not even absolutely interested in communism or none of their isms. Right. Or your religiousisms. 
None of it. I'm interested in Jesus Christ and Him only. Amen. Get the people to see Him. He's here proving Himself. Here is showing exactly what He said He would do in the last days. Now, they didn't understand it. They were too busy. Yet they claimed today to believe that He raised from the dead. Everybody, you believe He raised from the dead? Those who really claim to be Christians believe that. And then He can come right around and do it. Exactly what he said he would do after his resurrection, and still they don't see it. Amen. That's right. Oh, that's the truth. They they just still don't see it. Creeds, educational programs, they've got their ministers out and got them so educated blind. Blind to their man-made theologies that they're off of the word of God. As I said last night, God don't need any interpreter. I can't interpret his word. Neither can anybody interpret his word. He's his own interpreter. Amen. When he said he'd do anything, he does it. And that settles it. That's all there is to it. He said he would do it, and he did it. That settles it. Yeah, nobody tells this is that or that's that. He does it himself. Our interpretations is nothing to the scripture. He speaks himself. And that's the way it is. In the beginning, when he said, Let there be light, and there was light. I don't need any interpretation. A virgin shall conceive. He did. I'll pour out my spirit of all flesh. He did. Yes. Don't need any interpretation. What he said he would do in this day, he's done it. It don't need to be interpreted. It interprets itself. He's his own interpreter. Now, we're so busy about other things. We've taken our people off and a lot of our full gospel missions and so forth in schools. Gives a man a psychiatric test before, a mental test before a, a psychologist. Before he can be, become a missionary to see if his IQ is high enough. Right. Isn't that something? Yeah. I could imagine that in some farm or distant something that died many years ago, but as fresh as Pentecost is. Right. How could they ever do a thing like that? Did you imagine the IQ they required on the day of Pentecost? Yeah. Faith in God, that's what they required. Yeah. Right. That's a requirement. If thou believest these signs shall follow them and believe, Jesus said. He never said test them for their IQ. He said go into all the world, missionaries. Make disciples of all nations. These signs shall follow them and believe. That's the IQ. God's IQ. Whether you've got enough faith to make these things live and be real, Christ manifested to the people. But today we want to test them with some kind of an educational program. Mine. Testing Jack Ruby the other day for insanity. They're still doing it. The whole world's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie the man's crazy. No man can shoot another without being crazy. Yeah. The whole world's crazy. Right. Certainly it is. The farmer, he's crazy to the businessman. The businessman's crazy to the farmer. Who is crazy? The whole group is. There's only one sane thing, and that's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And his gospel has the answer to everything. Our books of psychology and all these things are nonsense. If it's contrary to this word, throw it away. God's word is right and all others are wrong. We see these things. No one of the worlds become drenched in blood. No one of the things are the way they are now. We don't. It's just every time. Wonder if Oswald that murdered our president. Wonder if he had got an insane test. I doubt it. But you see. How can a man run in and shoot another man and take his life and go on? I'm in Texas. I'll just stop on that. But let me tell you something. Ever, uh, the Lord will take care of it all someday. His coming. Notice. You have no right to take any man's life. No, sir. God's the only one who has right to take life. Amen. It's true. Now watch. The word truly written, the promise for that age, perfectly vindicated, and they still didn't recognize it. Notice. They had just acknowledged him to be a prophet. Jesus of Nazareth, are you just, are you a stranger here? Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed before God and the people, acknowledged him to be a prophet. Then if they had acknowledged him to be a prophet, a prophet is sent for that age that he lives in. He is to manifest God's promise. The word comes to the prophet. And if he was the prophet, then the promised word for that age was to be manifested by him. And still they didn't see it. Amen. They just couldn't see it. They said he was a prophet. Mighty indeed. What his works was. Mighty in word before God and so forth. He's great. We hope Israel had their hopes built up on him. Spiritual Israel. Not the church Israel. The 
just a nation, the, the people, the real spiritual Israel had their hopes built up on him. And um, notice, then when they acknowledged him as a prophet, what did he go to? He done just exactly what a prophet should do. He went right straight back to the world. That's right. right back to show, if he was a prophet, that they said he was, he goes right back to show the word promised of himself of that day. Amen. Still, they didn't recognize him. Walked right along, blind as they could be. Didn't recognize it. The promised word for their age. He was the prophet to manifest that same thing. Now look, he said, fool, slow of heart to understand all the prophets have said about Christ, how that he must suffer these things, as he said, and then enter into his glory, raise up the third day, all these things he's supposed to do, and yet you don't understand. They ought to know that there was a man that was making vindication of what they were saying they believed. Still, they couldn't see it. He was a sure sign of a pr true prophet, always, to go, not back to some other word, back to some other, but to prove a word that today he's living in is promised. Yeah. I remember before he come, John came on the scene. Yeah. He was a prophet. What was he? A forerunner of the Messiah. And he said, I'm not the Messiah. They thought he was because he was a prophet. He said, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoes, but he's standing among you. Oh, John was positive he was there because he knew he had to introduce him. His father was a priest. He didn't go to their seminary to learn to be a priest. His job was too important. He went to the wilderness to be alone with God. He didn't want to carry a fellowship card from anybody or they'd say this, that, or the other because they get all mixed up and influenced by, by the order of the man of that day. His job was important. He had to depend on God alone for he was to announce the Messiah. Jesus said he was a bright and shining light, and for a season you desired to walk with him, enjoyed walking by him. But now I have greater witness than John. See? He's, still, he didn't believe it. A sure sign of a true prophet. Going up, taking back to the word. They could not understand his manner of talk. And look, the scripture had said that was going to happen, exactly word by word the way it was. Even David, hundreds of years before that, about 800 years cried the very same thing that he said on the cross. And no doubt that in the temple that morning they might have sang that same song, Psalms 22. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And in the temple singing about it, and the God that they claimed that they served, they were crucifying. Yes. So is it today! The God that they claim that they believe in, that manifests himself, they all you'll shut up every door and no cooperation, no nothing else. They, it's contrary to their creeds. Oh, fool, slow of heart to know the day that we live in. Has not God promised this in the last days? How this lady of see a church be lukewarm and Jesus on the outside trying to get in for a little cooperation. What is Jesus? The Word, the true Word that's made manifest. Right. On the outside trying to get in and couldn't get in. The hour we're living, of course, blind, same way. Jesus said they'd be like that. The prophets said they'd be like that. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Truce breakers, false accusers in common. Despisers are those that are good. Having a form of God in this. Denying the power thereof. The power of his resurrection, his manifestation, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he lives today evermore to vindicate the things that he has said. I'm not yelling at you. But I want you to hear true. Their eyes were still closed. Notice, though they could not believe, there was something in them. They invited him to come in. He acted like he's going on by. He might act like that to you tonight. Now I'm closing. I'll go close early so I can have a prayer. He might act like you just going to pass you by. Maybe your prayer card won't be called. But remember, maybe he's just giving you a test too. He's just as much God out there as he is up here or anywhere else. He proves that day after day, night after night. He's God everywhere. See? He's omnipresent. Now, remember, he makes out like he's going to pass by. And they constrained him. Now, they didn't understand what he was talking about. But yet their minds all, uh, they didn't know what to believe. Now, there's just a many person like that today. There's a many person like that in Beaumont tonight. They don't know what to believe. But you know what they did? They did the most wisest thing that any man could do. They invited him in. Amen. That's it. 
That's it. It's then and then only can he reveal himself. When he's invited to come in. Welcome him in. Say, Lord Jesus, I know the scripture says that. I might not understand it, but come into my heart. Now, I want to accept you. I want to believe you. Then manifest yourself to me. Notice, they invited him in. Now, they couldn't explain it. They, they, it's, uh, he, he just, they didn't understand what he was talking about. It was all mixed up to them. They couldn't understand it. But yet they said, invite, constrain him. You must come in. He said, no, I, I got to be going on. Oh, but Lord, you, you must come in. You, you must come in. And constrained him until, called upon him and until he had to go in. That's what you do. And then when he gets inside, that's when he can reveal himself. He can make himself known when inside. Notice how he did it. After his resurrection, the true promised word. See, they did not realize who he was. But once inside of them, then he opened their eyes. That way, when he got inside the building with them there, he opened their eyes. After he got inside, he opened their eyes. What? By, not just up his hand and said, uh, uh, open it, let your eyes go. Their eyes were open anyhow, physically. Like down at Dathan, a, a Dothan mother was down there when they had uh, Elijah was down there. And the, uh, the Syrians is up on him. And Gehazi cried out, my father, the Syrians are everywhere. And Elisha walked out there and said, there's more with us than there is with them. He said, Lord, open that boy's eyes. And around that old prophet and over the hill were chariots of fire and angels of fire. Amen. And the Bible said he smoked the Syrians blind. He went out there and said, are you looking for Elijah? They said, yes, we're looking for him. Come on, I'll show you where he's at. And they could see physically walking right down, but they were blind to who he was. And that is tonight you might have 20-20 vision in your eyes, but your spirit... Can you understand that it's a promised word of this day? Amen. It's God's promise. God, get inside. Then open your eyes. Oh, that's him, is it? He promised it. Notice. Inside, he opened their eyes to who he was. Who he was. Now, if he can get inside of you tonight to your faith line, he can open your eyes to show you Hebrews 13, 8 right, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he can get inside and open your eyes, he'll do the same now. Just as he did for that woman at the well we talked about last night. Now notice, she knew by scripture what he was to be. Now that was a good part about that woman. Many of us today don't know by scripture what he is today. We put him in a manger every Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we take an Easter rabbit and make it his resurrection. No wonder we're all scrupled up. Yeah. That's right. No wonder we don't know where we're at. But this woman knew. She had in her mind, down in her heart was that seed, as I draw it to my good friend Jack Moore today, how that those Pharisees on the black side here, their heart was black back there. They had no life to begin with. As he got a little lighter as he went up because he was religious and helped the, uh, keep the laws. And when the word back there in the beginning was shining down through the word, the Bible, to them, they were walking. But back there, they had no life. There was this little ill-famed prostitute. Her first life up here was as black as it could be from her life. She was a prostitute. Secondly, down was just a little bit of light because she had a conception of what the Messiah would be. Here stood Jesus between them. When he did the Messiah signs, showed them who he was and everything, it blackened the whole thing of those Pharisees. They went back to the blackness. They had nothing down here to anchor on. They called him Beelzebub, a devil. And that light they did have went out. They perished in it. Here was this woman, black and sin as she could be. But in her heart, she knew what that Messiah would be. She knew what sign he'd show. And as soon as he said to her, he said, bring me a drink. She said, he's contacting her spirit to see where she was standing. And she said, it's not customary. He said, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And the conversation went on. Directly he found just exactly where her, her thoughts was and what was in her heart. She knew right then that when Messiah come, Messiah had to be God. God is the Word. The Word is a discerner of the thoughts in the heart. Amen. That's what was in the prophets. That woman no more than half of the preachers in America knows tonight. Right. Right. It's exactly right. And her and that's that stage. But see, she was ordained to lie. And as soon as that light broke... And she thought he's just an ordinary man, maybe a proposition. 
She said, why our fathers uh, worshiped in this mountain. You say in Jerusalem, being a Jew and so forth. The conversation, he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. I said, you said right, you've had five. Watch, that little speck of light of knowing who he was. That looked like it could be so. Yeah. Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. I know when the Messiah cometh, that's what he'll do. He said, I'm he. She said, that settles it. See, all of her blackness was made white. All the Pharisees' white were made black by rejecting it. That's the difference. Shining right through the word. See, because her name had been put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, she recognized it right now. It took that little seed, was laying back behind all this vulgar dirt and everything like that. It cleaned it out. That's what he come for. To clean out them kind that the Father had given him before the foundation of the world. Hey, man. I feel religious when I know that. To be the truth. Not he that willeth or he that runneth. It's God. Hey. Not how much you done or how much you didn't do. No man sought God. God sought you. And when the light flashed, them Pharisees said, Oh, that's, I've heard that stuff before. He's Beelzebub. That's a fortune teller. Then the whole thing went blank. This little woman, black up here and white down here, she said, I know when the Messiah cometh, I'm looking for him. When he comes, he'll do that. You must be his prophet. He said, no, I'm him. She said, come see a man that told me the things I've done. Isn't that the word Amen. that discerns the thoughts that's in the heart? Isn't that the very Messiah? Amen. She ought to be in the United States preaching tonight. <laughs> Much as I'm against this, she, she ought to be here doing something like that, showing some of these fellows what is the Messiah. Notice, once inside, opened their eyes, and by the scripture, he showed himself. Now he opened their eyes. Then when she said that, he'd come in. She, the, what was come in? The revelation. The seed that was down here. When that sunlight turned on it, you can take a seed and bury it under a rock. I seen not long ago where they had sunflower seed that had in a package for nearly 4,000 years in Egypt. They took that seed and some of the wheat that was in the garner that Joseph put in there all those years. And when it was placed in the ground and the sun struck it, it lived. Amen. And that germ of life stayed there. Oh, brother, when we were ordained of God before the foundation of the earth to be sons and daughters of God, when that light strikes it, there's no denomination, no church boundaries. There's no criticism. There's nothing going to stop it. It's going to live because God said it did. They recognized it. Her eyes come open and she knew it. She knew it. Once inside, she knew the scripture. That's the reason she knew him. These disciples after his resurrection didn't know the scripture. And that's the reason they didn't know him. And that's the way the Pharisees didn't know it. He said, search the scriptures. You think you have eternal life? Out? They're the one to tell you who I am. Oh, the vindication of his being. Then when the promises are vindicated, their eyes were opened and they knew him. Also, that same thing that opened eyes, closed eyes too. Those who made fun of it eternally put them back to where they was at the beginning, you see. Close your eyes. Peter's eyes is opened by the same thing he's looking for. Nathaniel's eyes, Jesus said, he knew them before the foundation of the world that they were to be these messengers. Now, in the face of all of this, in this age that we're living in, what has it done to your eyes? Now, that's a question, not what it done to theirs. Which side are you on tonight? Now, you've got to be either associated with the Pharisees or associated with the apostles and the believers. Now, it's done something for you. It's just, you're just up against it. It's done something. If you'd have been living in that day, what would you have done? What, what does your present state now identify you? Where does it make you? Think of it. Well, my church, that's what the Pharisees say. Are you ready to recognize Jesus Christ in the power of his resurrection? Are you willing to forsake everything and walk with him? Are you ready to believe him? Taking his light and life to others. What has it done? As he, as he is revealed in these last days, he promised it. Now you say, Brother Branham, the Messiah was revealed then. I know the scripture says so. Well, that same Messiah is promised to reveal himself today. Same thing. Now Hebrews 13, 8. Now listen. 
identifies him to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. John 14, 8 said that he that believeth in me, see, the works that I do, shall he do also. John 14, 9, here we find, he said, a little while, and the world, order, cosmos, won't know me anymore. They'll be totally blind. They won't see me anymore. A little, little while, and they won't see me, yet your eyes will be open. For you shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Luke 17, 28 said, Jesus said, that in the last days, the setting of the world would be just like it was when the Gentiles were destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah. Not in Noah's time as a flood, he gave the immorals of that day. But he said, as it was in the days of Sodom. Now, that was a Gentile world that was destroyed with fire. God put a rainbow in the sky, no more water, but it's fire this time. Yeah. Now, the Gentile world is ready for destruction. Yeah. He promised that there'd be a great perversion in the land. If you ever seen some of the pictures, the way the women dress and have that blue under their eyes look like they cankered, look what they're doing today. Right. Immorality. Perversion. Oh, some of the most hideous things. And this nation is galloped in it. It leads the rest of the world in divorces. Yeah. Our women has lost her, their, the moral standard. Right. They broke the backbone of the nation and all and half the things that America's built up on is sex. Everything, the whiskey, their tobaccos, and everything else the doctor's saying is poison will kill you. They puff it right on just the same. They'll do it anyhow. Amen. They have no sense of warning. And the scripture says for them not to cut their hairs off and things. And I'm not talking about them women of the world. That's cannon fodder anyhow. But I'm talking about you Pentecostal women. Yeah. You know better than that. The Bible said that Samson's hair separated him. A Nazarite birth separated him to the word of God. Women will do the same to you. A separated person in a Nazarite is separated to the Word. Amen. Away from the things of the world. And you preach it and cry it and scream it. And come back the next year, it's worse than it was when you were there. There's nothing left but divine judgment of God. The atomic bombs and missiles and things from the whole world. The comedians on television and, tele and, and radio and things are whistling and singing and cracking dirty jokes and saying curse words and... Uh, Awful things that should not even be allowed. The whole magazines and things are plastered full of naked, immoral women and everything. Trying to appease the mind. Right. Trying to quiet you. It reminds me of a little boy whistling in the dark, going through the graveyard, trying to make himself think he's not afraid. You're scared to death and you know it. Yeah. You know you're in for judgment and it's coming. Right. Because you blasphemed the Holy Ghost and you turned down the resurrected Jesus Christ. Exactly. Their eyes are closed. They don't know it. Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus said as it was at Sodom and Gomorrah, as I repeated to you last night, there's never been a time in history it's been set like this. Look, Lot, there's always three classes of people. Lot represented the church nominal. He's out in Sodom out there. Where the women had their hairs cut and they were having great things and he was one of the head men of the city and great things like that and let me get by it. But actually down in his heart it vexed his soul. He knew better. Right. He'd been with Abraham. Abraham never went out into the beginning. He was elected that God give a promise to that was looking for a coming son. A promised son. Sodom was still in his matter. Remember, then... Two angels went down there to preach. One stayed with Abraham and that group. Now watch. They went down there to preach. And remember, since we have been in this church ages, there has never been a man sent to the church. His name ending with H-A-M until now. G-R-A-H-A-M. The messenger of the hour to the church in Babylon down there in Sodom. Great evangelist is doing a great job out of it, too. He's blasting them right and left. They don't pay any attention to it. He said, I'll have 30,000 converts in six weeks. Go back another six weeks. They ain't got 30. What's the matter? They don't go nowhere. 
Walk up right. chewing, chewing gum, smoking cigarettes and everything else to make a confession or what they call a decision. That's all right. Let the advances carry it the way God says to you. To me, it isn't a decision. It's a birth. You've got to be born. You've got something you've got to happen. Here we are. Oh, there, H-A-M. Notice up here on the hill, there was one stayed with Abraham. Yeah. But what's, what kind of sign he showed? And that was the... God had showed Abraham sign after sign. But that was the last one before the promised son came. The last one. A man. He looked like a man. Just an ordinary man, dressed dust on his clothes, said he'd been in a journey. Abraham washed his feet. And then when he sat there with his back turned to the tent, now watch, he said, Abraham, a day or two before he had been Abram. And she had been Sarah, S-A-R-A. Now she's S-A-R-A-H, princess. He's not Abram, Abraham, the father of nations. He had to change his name. Notice he said, Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? I remember, he was 100 and she was 90. Said, she's in the tent behind you. He said, I'm going to visit you according to the promise. See? And that's the 28 days with Sarah. And Sarah laughed as it was up her sleeve. Said, me, an old woman, have pleasure with my Lord, him being old too. He said, why did Sarah doubt that? Saying in her heart, how can these things be? And she denied it. He said, yes, you did say it. Jesus said, just as it was. Now watch. How did Abraham recognize that? Now Abraham called him Elohim. How many knows that's true? Bible readers. Yes, sir. Elohim is the all-sufficient one, the great creator himself. Why did he call him Elohim? Because he could discern the thoughts that was in the heart. That's the word. Hebrews 4 said, said, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing the center of the bone and mire, and discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yeah, amen. That's how the prophets, Jesus called them gods. That's how Jesus proved himself. That woman knew he was the word. Amen. He could discern the thoughts. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, when the Son of Man is being revealed. What has it done to your eyes? Can he get inside tonight? I hope he can. Just remember, let us just be reverent and believe with all of our heart. He promised, remember, Malachi 4, there would come forth a message that would restore the, the faith of the fathers again. Bring the children back to the fathers. O oh, Pentecostal prophet. May God open your blind eyes in this day away from your differences of denominations and your creeds and things that you're so selfish and fighting over and look to the Son of God. When he's here 2,000 years, he's still alive and among us tonight, vindicating his promise. May God tonight as he gets us together like he did them at Emmaus, close the doors and reveal something to us. Remember, the reason they know that was him, he did it just like he did it before he was crucified. And then he vanished out of their sight to get away from it. He did it that way. May he come tonight among us and open our eyes by revealing himself to us by the same things that he did when he was here on earth because he promised he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. May the Lord help us to see him as he appears to us. Let us bow our heads. What is my objective? What is my motive towards my objective? Lord God, I can't say yes or no. You are the one who's compelling this. You promised it. And I pray that you'll let the people see and understand tonight. Let them one time, Lord, open them hearts wide open. Say, come in, Lord. Now reveal yourself to me. And may their eyes come open then to realize it. May there not be a sinner left in the building tonight, an unbeliever. Well, there might be those here who would be a, who would, would simply re resent me calling them a sinner. But Father God, you call the Pharisees that were religious and staunch religionists devils. Said, you are of your father the devil and his works you do. Because they didn't recognize the vindicated word, the Messiah. They could believe him 
in spirit, but one in flesh, no. And yet their scripture said that he would be God with us. Father, I pray tonight that you'll grant again. Is there any here that needs their eyes open? Give them the eyesight that you promised. And Revelation 3 of the Lady of Sia age. By sad that their eyes might be open tonight. That they might recognize the hour that we're living. And the vindication of the promise of God in this hour. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. What prayer cards? Okay. Where did we start one last night? Yes. Well, we haven't got too much time. 15 or 20 minutes yet. Let's begin and he give out prayer card K. Now you hold your cards. We're going to get to every one of them. This is something now after speaking. It used to be that ever who spoke, they did the speaking. You remember that. I just walk right in and start the prayer line. It's much easier. But today, I, I, I got to do something else. See? And I, I got to bring this. That's all. If it's received, I, I can just sow seed. I, I can't make it live. Amen. It has to fall on the right kind of ground. You know, his own seed, he said he sowed some fell by the wayside, didn't do no good at all. Some fell in thorns, but on stony ground, but some went over in good soil. That was the Son of God. I can sow seeds the same way. May he take my ignorance, lay it over to one side, and take my heart that I believe him, and look down and see if I love him or not, and then forgive me of all my sins and use me in any way that he, he can get glory out of me. Life or death doesn't matter. The sword glorifies him. Now, I ask everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus, please be seated just for a few minutes. Don't walk around. This is going to be a, always like this. Can you, can you imagine the expectation of the appearing of Jesus Christ? Now, if I walked out here as a man said, I am the Lord Jesus, had long hair. We don't know whether he did or not. I've got nail scars in my hands. Any hypocrite can do that. Yeah. I got oral and blood. And everything. That, still, that has, that, the prescription didn't promise that. How would you know Jesus? You, don't, you say, well, I know him by his picture. No, that's some psychology painted that. We don't know what he looked like. Yeah. See? I don't know what he was. That's, see, it has to be that way. Rebecca didn't know what Isaac looked like. But it was love anyhow. Yeah. She didn't know what he looked like. Um, she just had to go the types. She's seen him and loved him. She was willing to go anyhow to my what he looked like. But how would I know him? Jesus said, by their fruits they are known. Now, if Jesus is here, he would not be in a physical form like me. Because that body sitting at the right hand of the majesty. But his life is here. And remember, this is the last promise, the last sign that the church gets before the promised sign, promised son returns. Uh, scripture cannot be broken, you know. Immediately after Sodom, the promised son arrived and Sodom was burned. So shall it be again. Let's call from prayer card, say about, well, we go 1 to 15 last night. Let's take the other 15, 85 to 100. Um, prayer card K, was that it? K? K85. Who has it? Raise up your hand. This guy somewhere 85 come over here 86 87 88 89 90 in K 90 95 100 line up down here while I speak with the rest of the audience just a moment how many here does not have a prayer card and you're really sincere and you want God to help you raise up your hands I, I have a prayer card brother Branham now watch now don't move around just let them just coming out come up here just a minute be real reverent now just a few minutes think we're in the presence of the judge of heaven and earth how reverent would you be if you could see him standing here you'd be on your knees screaming crying and everything but he's here he promised it where two or three are gathered in my name that don't mean cause you've just been said here as a name that means in his name I'm in their midst notice are they all there I call no uh, K85, was that what I called her? No. 85. 85. 85 to 100. Stand over here. If you can't come, uh, some, there's a, a person on a cot here. Somebody should check his card. Maybe the man can't walk. If, he, if he's at his number, I see he has a prayer card in his hand. 
If that's him, well, you can push him into the prayer line. K85 through 100. If you're somebody can't get up, maybe somebody deaf, look around one of those cars. And while you're doing that, look there to me, the rest of you. Now, do you believe that he, in the beginning, was the Word? And the Word was with God? And the Word was God? And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us? The same yesterday, today, and forever? You believe that? Then what the Word has always done... It was a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. That's the reason that people knew that Jesus was Messiah. Is that right? How many knows that? Now, there was a little woman one time that was, she believed that she could touch his garment, she'd be made well. Do you remember the story? Now, she, remember, she just believed. He was in physical form then. And remember, he just did that one time. He only told the woman what she had done. She had too many husbands, and that entire city of Sychar believed on him because of the woman's testimony and her a prostitute. Now they won't believe if a, a godly minister ordained of God with a gospel can tell them. They still don't want to believe it. Amen. Just so dull, dark, honest to goodness, the whole world looks like it's got a pressure on it. Just, I don't know how to explain it, but it's here. Friends, wake up. It's later than we think. Now, you sit there and look to him. Now, the Bible said in Hebrews 4 that he is a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Now, if he is that high priest and you touched him, you touched like that woman touched. Now, he didn't feel a physical touch. He said, I perceive that I got weak. Virtue gone from him. Now, if he's still the high priest, you can still draw virtue from him because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then how does he do? Like God said in the days of Sodom, what was that sign? God, Elohim, in man that eat, drink. You understand that? Jesus was God in man. That's the reason he discerned her thoughts. God in man. Repeated it again. Said it would be repeated again in the last days when he would be revealed. It would be like it was in the days of Sodom. Dozens times dozens of scriptures. It's been looked over. But you don't have to have interpretation. God will interpret it if it's right. Amen. He'll prove it's right. Now, have faith and believe. One word from him should settle it. My Heavenly Father, this is your word, the best that I know. Now it's all in your hands, Father. I commit myself to you with this audience. Let it be tonight when we go from here, may we say, did not our hearts burn within us as our Lord Jesus in the form of the Holy Spirit talked to us while we were there. Granted, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, for his glory. Amen. I have faith, believe. I believe Brother Perry's going to move this around here in just a minute. And I remember these people I know not. They're, I know these ministers here. I know each of them. But I don't see anyone else that I know. I know there's some people out there that I. Wouldn't, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is Brother Pat Tyler sitting right here. I'm not sure. Sitting right here. In the prayer line, if I don't, you know I know nothing about you, raise up your hands. You that's in this prayer line here has got the card come. Raise up your hands. That's right. Now, out there, you know the same. Now, here is true. If he is risen from the dead, then he promised that God would be made known in human flesh. Now, no matter how much he anoints me, you've got to be anointed with faith to believe it. It takes both of us. You, the woman who touched his garment, she had to believe. He right. went on by. See? She had to believe it. See, it's God. Now, if somebody thinks a gift is a, a great big knife, God gave you a gift, you need to take it and slice it and do what? You've got the wrong conception of a gift. A gift is knowing how to get yourself out of the way and let God do what he wants to do. See? It's knowing how to relax yourself that God can use you in the way that he wants to. Yeah. Get, get yourself out of the way. Right. See? 
I don't know none of these people. Don't know this person here. Here's a lady standing here. She looks about like a precious one that just passed on to glory recently. Wouldn't I be a horrible thing if my mother could look from glory tonight and think I'd come here to deceive a poor person like that? What objective would I have? I'd be insane. I'm here to try to help you, lady. And the only thing I can do is just do what I'm commissioned to do. I can't make people believe. I can't make no one believe. I have, I'm not a theologian. I'm not even a... I'm not a I am going to call myself a preacher. See? Because I have no education. And a preacher today is somebody who's got a Bachelor of Art and Doctor's Degree. Well, I don't know what them things are. Somebody asked me the other day, said, You don't use your nouns and pronouns right. I said, I don't know what they are. I, I don't know. I didn't know what a noun was or a pronoun. I couldn't tell you to save my life. The difference between a noun and a pronoun. I can't tell you. But one thing I know, I know him. And the power of his resurrection. That's all I care to know. Him is the one I want to know. To know him is life. And that's what I'm after. Life to live. That's what you're here for. Life to live. Now, lady, if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me something that you have done, something that you ought not have done, something that you're here for, like you did the woman, told her what was wrong with her. Maybe tell what's wrong with you if there is. Then you'll know whether it's the truth or not. You'll be a witness of that. Would that make you, you'd know there's something, something had to come from somewhere. It could be natural. It had to be supernatural. Would it cause you to believe that this word that I've said it be God interpreted his own word then that be God vindicated? Will the audience believe the same? Be real reverend. I remember. Be real reverend. You say you're stalling, Brother Branton? Yes, certainly. I don't know the woman. It's got to take something else. The angel of the Lord, the Holy Spirit itself, that pillar of fire that led the children through Israel through the wilderness. See, when he was there, he was Jesus. Moses sustained, sustained the approach of Christ's greater riches than that of Egypt. He forsook Egypt. When Jesus here on earth, he said, I come to God and won't go to God. He died, buried, rose, ascended up. And Saul, on his road down to uh, Damascus, was struck down by that same light. And that Jew would have never called some freak light Lord. And he said, Lord, who are you? He knew that was the Lord that led his people through the wilderness. He said, I'm Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Now that same light is among us. Then it vindicates itself by producing what it did there. Now, if he will do that, that will make us believe and be happy more. May he grant it. You are just getting you to say something. See, when you, when you get yourself away, it lifts way up and... Just any word you say, anything. See, you're a human being, got a spirit. And whatever that spirit is, as soon as it knows, I see, I can see just what it is and which way you're going there, but that's a gift of God. So that's what he did, said to the woman. Same thing. Exactly the same thing. Now, you are here because you're in behalf of somebody else. You're wanting prayer for somebody else, and that's somebody else is in the hospital and it's tuberculosis that's your husband that's right and another thing I see he's shattered to death he's a dark spirit over him because he isn't a Christian that's right isn't that true he isn't a Christian he's shattered to death you're interested that he does receive Christ. Now see, you've had some trouble too, or they're expecting you to have TV or something. They think you had an x-ray or something. They, they just x-rayed you far TV. That's right, isn't it? Now will you go to believe with all your heart? Now just as you have believed, whatever you believe this was now, that knows it, just as you believe it, go to him. Tell him what's happened here. Maybe that dark spirit will leave. You'll be saved. Then you'll get up and come home. I believe with all your heart. God bless you. You believe? That's you can judge it whatever you wish to. It's up to you now. How do you do, lady? I suppose we're strangers to one another. But uh, you believe that God could reveal to me uh, your troubles, and if He would, it would cause you to believe greatly, would it?
man come up from here and see. He believed that a few minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> no? You are here standing for somebody else too. But your husband. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus can reveal to me what is wrong with your husband? Do you believe it? He hasn't heard yet. That's right. And there's a child here that has an affliction that you're praying for too. Do you believe that that will happen too? All right. You believe with all your heart now, just as you have believed, so be it. See, I can't heal. I can only pronounce, see, what I see. And you believe with all your heart, it'll be the way you have believed. You believe it, and the Lord bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, no doubt. Have faith. Just real reverent. Now, if, if you start, don't start moving around. See, you're sitting real nice. Stay like that and listen for a few minutes. How do you do, sir? I don't know you. We're strangers to each other. But we've got to meet at the judgment bar of Christ and answer for our, our appearing here tonight. You believe that, don't you? Yes, sir. I, I just watch a light, sir. See, it's anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now you're suffering with your stomach. Your stomach's bothering you. That's right. And you've got something you're trying to get rid of. A habit. That's really what's causing your stomach. It'll go to cancer pretty soon if you don't stop it. Smoking. You believe that God will take it away from you and make, and make you well? You will? You believe if I lay hands up on you now while this something that you know it's, it seems mysterious to you, but that anointing of Christ, if I ask him to take that thing away from you and make you well, you can lay her down and walk away. You believe that? Believe Come that. here. Come here, sir. Satan, upon the basis of our faith, Precious the presence Lord. of Jesus Christ who triumphed over you and all your kind, I charge this devil that's sending this man to a premature grave with them cigarettes, come out of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Man, go now. It'll be over. Live like you should. Do you believe? Just keep believing. How do you do? Mighty friendly looking lady. You believe Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. You believe me to be his servant. The reason I say that, when you, did you ever read my book? It's sitting there, if you can get the people to believe you. See, that's the main thing. You've got to believe it. You just, no other way to approach God but through a gift but to believe it. Like Martha said, I believe that you're the Son of God. If you'd been here, my brother would not have died. See, she approached it right when she had a right to fuss at him about not coming. But she didn't do it. She'd come with reverence. She got what she asked for. How do you believe it? That God is present and knows all things. And you believe that he's able to reveal to me the things that's wrong with you? The trouble is in the stomach. You have complications, many things wrong. And you've got complications, that's a growth that's in the stomach. That's right. That's right. All right. But sweetly, you go on back down. Believe with all your heart, you'll be well. Strange in our culture, man. Oh, he knows you too, you see. <laughs> How do you do? Now you got a lady's trouble. And that shows that it's in the ovaries. And it's a cyst in the ovaries. Do you believe that Jesus Christ can remove that cyst? I ought to tell you what happened to my wife just recently. <clears throat> when you heard the testimony? Well, can't yours be like hers? All right, it'll be that way if you just believe it. Oh, yeah. Look here, young lady. Yours is a lady's trouble too. Female disorder. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is present to make you well and to heal you? And do you believe in it? It'll all be gone, all over with, and you'll get well and be, live a normal life? All right. Go believe it now. It'll just be that way. You believe that God can heal sugar diabetes too? 
Make you well? All right, just keep on walking across the platform saying, I believe you, and you'll get over it if you just believe it. A blood transfusion of Calvary will make it so. I, something happened in the audience. I didn't get it just right. lady sitting right here looking at me is suffering with stomach trouble. You believe that Jesus Christ makes you well? Right next to her is the lady who's got a heart trouble right back there. With, right behind the dark looking hat on with a heart trouble. You had it too. You did have it. See, I said you had it. You're both free now. Jesus Christ makes you both well. All right, come on the road. God bless you. Have, have faith in me with all At your age, you have complications, many things wrong, but one of the main things you want to pray for is your heart, too. You believe he'll make you well from that heart trouble and heal you? All right, go believe it. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. You'll have, have your healing. A nervousness has bothered him a long time, give him a prostrate, getting up at night, but one of the main things you have is this diabetes. You believe that God can heal you of that and make you well? Just keep moving on saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart. God can heal any kind of blood disease. Leave me or anything else. you believe that? All right, just go on. And God will make you well. Believe it. How do you do? I see you trying to get up from the bed real slow. Arthritis is about got you. But you believe that he's going to leave you tonight and now you're going to be well? Just keep walking across the platform saying thank you, Lord Jesus, and believe with all your heart. Do you believe with all your heart? Let him go ahead. He can heal her anyhow. So <laughs> he caught that himself. <laughs> Come. You believe the Lord Jesus can heal stomach trouble and make you well and send you home to eat? Go ahead and believe it. And Jesus Christ will make you well. Come, lady. You believe the back trouble, kidney trouble, things will leave you as you go across this. Keep moving. Say, not thank you, Lord Jesus. What do you all think? Has, has this done anything to your eyes for the day? You believe with all your hearts? Just look going there with the people. Now you in the audience. You believe. See what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if he's still the Son of God. Ah, those people going, sitting in, they're all happy, looking to one another, rejoicing, telling one another about what great things the Lord has done. <laughs> Little lady sitting here, suffering with a back trouble, sitting right here with a gray looking hair, and know the lady behind you. You touched something, didn't you? You know, it wasn't me. It was him, the high priest. You believe with all your heart that your back won't bother you no more? Would you like to lay them cigarettes down and say, I'll never pick them up again, sir? Lay sitting next to her. You've tried it a long time, but you can't have faith over it somehow. You believe now you got faith over it? Raise your hands if you say, I believe it now. All right. Don't smoke no more. Go home. Be well. Do as you ought to do. If thou canst believe. The little lady sitting here with the red coat on looking at me, suffering with arthritis. Do you believe that God can make you well, lady? You do? All right. You can have yours. Did that thrill you, sister, sitting over there? The lady's got complications. She's going to miss it. God help me. Mrs. Cox. You believe? All right. He, he thought he'd get by with that, but he didn't do it. You got it. Oh. Let's say praise the Lord, friends. Don't you know? Sir, you have cancer. Yellow jonders. You can't live laying there. That's right. I don't. I can't heal you, but you couldn't hide what is wrong with you. See, is there? You you can't live sitting there. You know that because you're you're gone. They say it's in your stomach, and it is. It's in the liver, which has caused the, the jaundice to come up. But do you believe with all your heart and ready now, like those men who laid at the gate down there, Samaria said, "Why sit we here till we die? You're going to die laying there. You've only got one chance, and that is to accept." him while you're in his presence and believe it with all your heart will you do that then in the name of jesus christ believe it with all your heart and rise up take your cot and go home thanking and praising god do you believe that oh well, god will give him strength don't worry about that if he there he is go take his cot hold her up and go home the rest of you believe Stand up on your feet now. What about you getting up? I don't care what's wrong with you. Raise up. Raise your hands and give me praise. Lord Jesus, 
They're in your hands in the name of Jesus.